So we finally got the first Doctor Who episode in exactly a year. Was it worth the wait? Mm, probably, maybe. A little bit. I want to start off by saying I'm going to spoil the episode. Like, not spoil it as in I'm going to rip it apart and make you hate the episode. I'm going to say spoilers, um, so watch the episode before you watch this. Starting off with the characters, and I... Uh, Capaldi is gold. I got halfway through this episode and I went, my goodness, this is why Doctor Who is still going at the moment. It's because of Capaldi. The same thing that happened with Matt Smith. So there were some shit episodes, but Matt Smith was always great. Same with Capaldi. There are some horrendous episodes in the past three years, but Capaldi is just stunning no matter what they throw at him. And I think this episode has solidified, hopefully, what his Doctor's gonna be like, and it is the drunk uncle. I will admit, I miss the darkness of his Doctor in Series 8. I thought that was great. But it needs to appeal to a wider audience. It's great to have a villain that you love to hate, like, uh, you know, the Loki in Marvel and the Joker in Batman. But you cannot hate your main character. So I really hope people have jumped back on the series with this Christmas special because it was a lot more light-hearted and a lot more what the Russell T Davies era had. I loved Grant. Um, I loved Child Grant, I loved Teenage Grant, and I loved Adult Grant. It was very 80s. I got less Clark Kent and more like Marty McFly. I loved the medicine and the glass water thing. That was brilliant. My, I didn't see it coming. My mum did. My mum was like, oh, he's going to swallow that. And I'm like, what? Why? And she's like, it's medicine. And then he says it. I'm like, oh my god. Mum was a step ahead of me this time. I loved the childhood, like, the, the bit with the school. That was brilliantly realised, and I could say, as a nerd, exactly how high school works. Great visual humour. Something I'll get to is the adult humour in this episode was... It was... It was jarring and then it was brilliant. But it was great visual humour in that scene. And also, well done on reusing the class hallways. You know, it's great, BBC. Reuse the shit out of your, your sets because you need to save money where you can. I also love that he's a nanny and Moffat is... is Persistent in breaking gender stereotypes, but generally it's very on the nose and it's very in your face. Great that he tries to do it, but he's not very subtle. This one I liked. It was, it was like, it happened for so long in the episode and you sort of went, yeah, that's cool, because dudes can be nannies. And then, you know, she brings it up um, when the villains are like, he's a guy, a nanny, um, and it worked well with Lucy then realising how much she loved him, liked him, loved him, I don't know what she feels about him. But it worked great for her then realising he's been there for her all this time. It was good. It was good. It was a, it's a breaking of a gender stereotype that helped the plot. And that's cool. Speaking of Lucy, she was stunning. Uh, her and Grant should be on the TARDIS instead of someone else. She was unique, but also, as did Grant, brought the stereotypes of those uh, 80s superhero films. I thought she was funny, her and Grant and the Doctor all had great comedic timing. It was like, all three of them, it felt like there was a lot of episodes we haven't seen with them. It was like, as soon as she was on screen and he was, it was like, it was like there was episodes that we'd seen but we'd forgotten and this was like the origin story. Now the villains were, as usual, underdeveloped. Um, I don't think Doctor Who's had a well-developed villain since, like, the Zygons last series was okay, but apart from that, I mean, the business guy was a business guy, the German scientist was a German scientist, like, there was nothing to their characters. And also, what is their plan? What was their plan originally with the, ba with the brains? Was that explained? Because I feel like the fact that the business guy was so like, oh yeah, brains, Cool. And the German guy's like, no, no, brains are disappearing. And that's when he's confused. That's when he's shocked by the brains. The fact that there's more and then there's less and then there's more. Not the fact that there's jars of brains in your company. What was the, what was the human side of keeping brains in jars? Did I miss something? And not at all. He wasn't horrible, but he also, what, he didn't need to be there. The one thing he did which helped the episode, not helped, helped the plot, was landing the TARDIS. And even that, I'm like, F you. I've said it before, all you have to do is be a character written by Moffat and you can fly the TARDIS. Like, he's even overconfident, he already, he already thinks he can fly it better than the Doctor. Probably can because he's written by Moffat, but that's not okay, alright? Can we stop letting characters fly the TARDIS that aren't the Doctor? He, he has devices that lets the TARDIS home in on him. He doesn't have to, like, it was very much like Matt Lucas was asked on set and they said, sit in the background. If you feel like talking, talk. 
the actors will stop for you, and then they'll continue on with the scene. Like, I just, I just don't know why he's there. Story-wise, I know why he's there, because, you know, the Doctor spent 24 years with River Song, and then he was a bit sad, so he's like, F*** it, who's the funniest thing around here? Nardole, I'll cut his head off and put it back on his lifeless corpse. How do you put a head... I know the Doctor's amazing, but you can't put a head back on a lifeless corpse. That is not how human physio... physio... that word, he's not human. I'm very distressed out the fact that Nardole's both with a body and in the series permanently. I'm just a not I'm just I don't know why. And Nardo also ruined the end of the episode because you have this lovely moment where the doctor gives this beautiful speech and he ends with be happy. And then Nardo walks in and he's like, uh, uh, her name was a bit of a song, and the doctor's very sad now, but he'll be fine. Eventually he'll be fine. It's alright, it's fine. It's like what is the point? You've ruined a beautiful end of the episode. I'm sorry, I know it might be emotional and it's cool to link it, but I feel like the episode already linked the River Song storyline perfectly already with the subtle hints about River making the Doctor sad. I mean, in that one scene, they talk about the Doctor being with someone for 24 years. I just don't think that extra little bit of dialogue was necessary. The Doctor looking badass in the TARDIS with his unbuttoned shirt would have been enough. Plot-wise, as I said, it's very much what Doctor Who needed. It was very light-hearted, it was very straight to the point where a superhero parody, um, it never tried to overdo itself, it never stayed outside its welcome. It was just quick, funny, uh, and, and it was good. It was a good light-hearted moment for Christmas. I loved the adult humour. I mean, the Doctor told someone that they're full of shit. The Doctor said that, in a roundabout way. Someone needs changing. You're not the only one that's full of it. I love the puberty jokes, they were very well done. Not just puberty, but like, just dude jokes, like the fact when he kissed Lucy, the doctor's like, dude, you're gonna fly because you're gonna fly. And yeah, I loved the adult humour. It was just enough to pass by kids, and like, the fact that he levitates and stuff, that's funny for kids, but it also has backward, you know, there's other meanings. Question, was the doctor cool with leaving the aliens on that planet? Yes, Grant stopped the, the, the ship from exploding. Could they not get another ship and do the same thing? Like, he's happy with leaving a business running. I mean, maybe he stopped the business. But he's happy with a business sticking around with, what was it, like 36 brains? 36 alien brains? He's cool with that? He's cool with them staying there? He's cool with not, I mean, he's not going to kill the bad guys, but he's cool with everything just staying on Earth and and he's just assuming they're not going to do it, just because they stopped one of his ships. What is going to stop them from getting another ship and blowing up New York? Yes, alright, I understand. Um, unit does pop in, I just rewatched. Unit does pop in and help out and clear up, but the brain thing is inside a unit soldier now. Like, is that going to be like how he had Zygon inversion invasion? Like, it's going to have a part two? Because rather than having a part two, the Doctor should have gone with unit and checked out the stuff and solved the problem there and then. Wasn't a good resolution to the problem. I'm just saying, if the Doctor had checked out the base post stopping the ship, everything would have been fine, but he didn't. That's what I'm saying. Bad resolution. Back to you, Will. The opening shot diving under the, like, the city and then going up and like, it was very floaty and it was very, it was very precise, which is what cinematic superhero films seem to be. Not a bad thing, but it's less organic, and it's very, it's, it's a visual style that you can instantly recognise, and for an episode that is intending to be very superhero filmic, it was very well done. And visual effects, well, here's the thing, right, um, the head splitting, brilliant, I thought that looked quite practical, and it probably was, uh, and so it was done very well, and it was creepy, um, housing a gun within there was very cool, and it looked real. It looked very Doctor Who, real to an extent. Um, I loved the brains in the jars with the eyes, the practical effects behind that were really cool, very creepy, very classic Doctor Who, and that's great. But, how is this acceptable in 2016? That is horrific. The Doctor is laying on the ground, and Grant is obviously then just on some sticks, 
Like, it, and when he's flying with Lucy, he's just standing upright. Like, it just looks horrendous. I loved the way that they showed him leaving the house. Like, his clothes dropping, or the glasses spinning on the desk. That's great! Such a perfect way to alleviate the fact that you have to show someone flying. But whenever you show him flying, it looks like crap. Whew. But apart from that, a great episode. Also loved that we got to see some more action of this one. Not that one. That one. I love this Sonic. The more I see it, the more I love it. Obviously not the best episode. Obviously not the most Christmassy episode for a Christmas special, but that's fine. There's only so much you can do with a Christmas special. I mean, two years ago, we got to the point where Santa Claus was real in an episode. I wouldn't say well done. Good job, Stephen Moffat. Uh, and well done to everyone else. That was a great episode, and I can't wait to see series 10. The trailer was average at best, but, you know, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for a tonal shift. Um, I'm ready for no more Clara. High five! Thank you. Coming up next will be a Q&A that you've all sent in lovely questions, and thank you again for sending all them. Um, and I'm going to try and get through as many as possible. Uh, also, I will have probably a breakdown of the Series 10 trailer, or just my thoughts on the trailer, a bit more than that was average. But, for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.